the ways you can try and explain it is people have been looking at the way players like Josh Hamilton, like Alex Rodriguez, seem to shrink in the playoffs, and it always seems to clump, come down to, are they clutch? Do right, they like hit There's some the sort clutch? of intangible skill set. Right. right. It seems like some people believe it, some people don't, and it it seems to be backed up by guys. Jeter's good because he's clutch. A-Rod's right. not Why clutch, is therefore it? he can't produce in the playoffs. Why is it that Jeter always seems to produce in the clutch? He's always hitting in the playoffs, late-game situations. Why is it, while A-Rod just doesn't seem to do it, Josh Hamilton, we saw the same thing from him last year. One way to try and explain it, I think, is by looking at the disparity that Josh Hamilton has between how he hits his on-base plus slugging percentage against the best pitchers in the league versus how he hits OPS against the worst pitchers in the league. And I think that when you look at it, you see that Josh Hamilton has the largest disparity between OPS against the best pitchers in the league Mm -hmm. versus his OPS against the worst pitchers in the league. And when you look at the playoffs, and obviously in the playoffs you're going to get condensed pitching staffs, condensed rotations, the better middle relievers are going to be used more, longer, and more often back-to-back days you see that you're hitting against better pitching. And it could be that Josh Hamilton's inflated numbers that come during the regular season come against maybe not the best pitchers. When when he gets to the postseason, maybe that's the reason that he shrank in the playoffs, that he wasn't he was facing just a better quality pitcher and didn't respond as well as other guys like a Jeter who hits in the playoffs would. And and that's actually what the stats indicate, right? Yeah, I mean when now, whether look- the stats are the unequivocal truth is not yet determined, but that's what the stats indicate. There's certainly a correlation. I don't know if there's causation. There's a correlation. His OPS is like 720, right? Yeah, uh, about 720, yes. And what's his OPS against the bottom 60% of pitching? It's about 1,100. About 1,100. And that's a discrepancy of about 433 points. The biggest in baseball. The biggest in baseball. And other guys on that list, Chris Davis at 424, Curtis Grandison at 378, Jay Bruce at 343, Ian Kinsler at 305. Now, look, I mean, if you look at those guys, they're all good ball players, but there are some similarities. Guys that yeah. strike out, guys that hit for power. So that's one of the things um, that you can find in the statistics is that these are guys that are kind of guys with high ceilings, so they can really mash. I mean, they're capable of putting up ridiculous production, but they're also capable of going into terrible slumps. And that's kind of what this stat is is indicating is that you know, look, Hamilton's going to be ridiculous. He's going to be ridiculous against that bottom 60%, but he's only going to be 12% better against upper echelon pitchers. But how valuable is that? That's the question. Right. What I mean, the, you... the guy with the smallest discrepancy is who? Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. He's more of a guy that's going to be in the middle. He's always going to be pretty even keel. So he's never going to put up 40 home runs. He's never going to hit the ball 600 feet. But he's going to be even keel, and he actually does have the ability to rise up against the upper echelon of pitching. Right. Well, Derek Jeter hits 19% better than the average baseball player does against upper-tier pitching, which when you look at where – and we're using these numbers in the last three years. So when you look at where Josh Hamilton has been OPS-wise in the last three years and where a guy like Jeter is in the last three years, a guy who is basically a singles hitter now, maybe a few doubles, but isn't hitting for power, isn't a big OPS guy, and you see that he is that much better – than a guy like Josh Hamilton against upper-tier pitching. And you have to ask yourself, how valuable is Josh Hamilton in the postseason when he's facing these top-tier pitchers? It's a serious question. Now, he's better than an average player, 12% Mm -hmm. better. Is it worth an extra 100% more? Yeah, he's going to help you get to the postseason. But once you're there, is it worth— It's all about allocation of resources. And do you want to give 100% more money to a guy like Josh Hamilton who— we see is going to be only 12% better than the average player against top-tier pitching in the playoffs. Right, so he might not lead your team once you get to the playoffs, but he's probably going to lead your team to the playoffs. And fortunately for him, baseball is a team game. So if you have one guy disappear, hopefully you have enough around him to help the team get to the next level and ultimately to win a World Series. Yeah, but do you know what that makes me think of? It makes me think of Zach Greinke and the Zach Greinke signing. And a guy like Zach Greinke who, yeah, he helps you get to the playoffs, But you know what? Pitching wins in the playoffs, and he's going to help you win in the playoffs. I think that's a huge factor when you have to look at which of these teams you think made out better in the signing. I agree. I mean, ultimately, the pitcher has more importance once you get to the playoffs. I mean, what's the old adage? 
Pitching wins championships. Well, look at the Giants. I mean, pitching and defense. Look at the Giants. They've look at the been Giants. Unbelievable in the playoffs recently. With how about very- the Diamondbacks? Diamondbacks. I mean, 0-1 Diamondbacks had the two best pitchers in the league. Yeah, I mean, you and look it at it showed. I mean, well, that one-two punch, Randy Johnson closing games for you in Game Seven. Unbelievable. I mean, when you look at what the Giants have done recently, though, you see not much on the offensive side. You see a lot but of timely pitching. hitting. Timely hitting. It's not like they were unable to produce they were able to produce but really the strength of that team has been bullpen and starting pitching getting a lot out of their starters tim lincecum matt kane jonathan sanchez guys like that getting a lot out of them in the playoffs in the right time and then closing it out with that great bullpen that they have we got to take a break but i think we can both agree we'd probably prefer granky but hamilton's not a bad consolation prize not bad and if the angels are able to build a team around him and i think you're pretty much there but I agree. I think you're going to need a couple more pitchers. You need a, at least one more arm. Because if you're counting on Joe Blinn, if you're counting on Garrett Richards, if you're counting on those guys to lead you in the playoffs, you might be counting on too much. Yeah, but talking about Granky, I think there are still question marks about him. We have more to talk about when oh, it comes to Zach. Right? Without a doubt. And frankly, to pay a guy $800,000 per start just boggles my mind.